The 660 horsepower Electromotive Corporation SW1 in cap switcher number 1901, that was a mouthful, has an incredible life story. It was built in an astonishingly 1939, the same year that the FT Streamline diesel freight unit was introduced by EMC. The FT diesel is the engine that single high handedly wiped out the steam locomotive. The 1901 was first tested on the Atlantic coastline and was soon rejected and returned to EMC after being found inadequate for the duties for which it was to be assigned. Worthy of mention is that the ACL had also tested an ALCO HH660 which it ironically numbered number 1900. 1901 was then resold to the Richmond Terminal Railroad and placed into service on March 15, 1940 as the Richmond Terminal Railway engine number 1. During the early years of World War II, it was found that the engine wasn't heavy enough for the increased passenger work at the Broad Street Station, so it was transferred to the Richmond, Fredericksburg, and Potomac, all while substituting it at the Broad Street Station with one of the 1,000 horsepower Alco diesel switchers which the RFMP then had on order. On April 1, 1944, the little EMD was purchased outright by the RFMP and was renumbered RFMP number 50. The engine was used at Bolton Yard in the vicinity of the Richmond Freight Station until it was sold yet again and shipped to the Canton Railway Company in Baltimore on March 30, 1956 as locomotive number 26. Coincidentally, the Canton Railroad was the original owner of five other SW1 diesels numbered 21 through 25. Over the years and through several more owners, it slowly worked its way up the East Coast toiling for such companies as the New Jersey Contracting Corporation, also as number 26, and the McCormick Sand and Gravel Company in South Amboy, New Jersey, again as number 26. It finally made its way into the Keystone State and the Tawanda Monroton Shippers Lifeline, a tiny short line operation in Tawanda in February 1977, again as number 26. While there, it was painted into a Lehigh Valley inspired color scheme, the one that you see here. In December of 2009, the railroad and the locomotive were both bought by the Reading and Northern and the number 26 somehow ended up at Steamtown in late 2014. I say somehow because it was always my impression that the Reading and Northern's owner, Andy Muller, had a beef with the Pennsylvania Northeastern Regional Rail Authority, similar to the one he currently has with the North Shore system of central Pennsylvania. After being stored for the last few years, the 1901, formerly Lehigh Valley number 26, looks like it's coming back to life and being put back into operation. The Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railway was a tourist railroad that operated passenger excursions along the Reading and Northern trackage from the former Central Railroad of New Jersey Station in Jim Thorpe to Old Penhaven Junction following the Lehigh River through the Lehigh Gorge State Park. Excursions ran on weekends, holidays, and some weekdays between May and December. In 2019, an audit by the Borough of Jim Thorpe revealed that the Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railway allegedly owed the Borough $90,000 in amusement taxes. The issue went to court and the judge sided with the Borough with the railroad appealing the decision. The railway threatened to leave the borough of Jim Thorpe over the unpaid taxes and ceased operations in November 2019, refusing to pay the amusement tax, saying that the tourist railroad was not an amusement.
Although the operations shut down in 2019, they have since been reinstated in one form or another. The regular excursion consisted of a 16-mile, 70-minute round trip out of Jim Thorpe following the Lehigh River to the Lehigh Gorge State Park. In October, the railway operated abbreviated 45-minute trips that offered views of fall foliage in the Lehigh Gorge State Park. There were several special excursions that were operated by the Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railway. The hometown high bridge train was a 30-mile, two-hour round-trip excursion that ran on the first full weekend in October from Jim Thorpe through Nesquahoning to the 1168-foot-long hometown high bridge that passes 168 feet over the Little Schuylkill River, offering views of the striking fall foliage. The bike train was a 25-mile, one-hour, one-way trip to Jim Thorpe to Whitehaven, and it allowed passengers to ride their bicycles for the 25-mile journey along the Lehigh Gorge Trail from Whitehaven back to Jim Thorpe. The Santa Claus special train operated out of Jim Thorpe between the day after Thanksgiving and the weekend before Christmas, with a visit from Santa Claus aboard that train. Today, the r &N operates passenger excursions out of the Reading Outer Station located outside of Reading, Pennsylvania in Muhlenberg Township with rail diesel car trains running from the Reading Outer Station to Jim Thorpe with an intermediate stop in Port Clinton. The train runs from Reading and Port Clinton to Jim Thorpe in the morning, allowing passengers to explore Jim Thorpe. Then return trip leaves Jim Thorpe in the late afternoon and returns to Port Clinton and Reading in the evening. This excursion operates on select weekends and holidays from May to November. Getting back to the Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railway proper, trains were usually diesel powered and consisted of an open air car, standard coaches, a gondola car that allowed passengers to transport the bicycles aboard the train and ride their bicycles back to Jim Thorpe and the caboose. Number 5033 and the trailing 5022, shown moving through Taylor Yard and up track 17, are what the RNN classifies as SD50Ms. The 5033 was one of the diesels that was assigned to exclusive Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railway service and wears the special blue and silver paint scheme that was put out to pasture by the Cornell Red and Yellow GP30s when they arrived on the property. The GP30s were themselves displaced and regulated into everyday freight service shortly after working for the Scenic Railway. Today, Excursions will usually run with newly painted ex-Norfolk Southern GP38-2s along with the newly purchased F9A and F7B or the mighty x rating T1484 number 2102. The 5033 was eventually painted like the other ST50s at the time in the standard green and silver. Today, the 5033 and the 5022 have been reunited, sitting in the Penobscot yard awaiting for their next call of duty. The 5014 is the first of nine SD50s on the road, including three standard SD50s, two SD50Ms, and four SD50-2s acquired from CSX. One of the SD50-2s is an XB&O, which in turn means that it's an X-Chessie system. The 5014 is an X-Union Pacific and Missouri Pacific, both of the same number. In fact, with the exception of the XCSXers that are numbered from 5018 to 5021, the other five have had the same road number their whole lives. Although this is speculation, I suspect the reason is because they were bought early in Reading and Northern's railroading days and renumbering a locomotive is an expensive process that involves more than just slapping on a new number. 
Number boards have to be changed and amendments have to be made to numerous mechanical documents and I estimate that renumbering a locomotive today can easily cost multiple thousands of dollars. And as long as we're talking about the 5014, here's a picture of her in 2004 on Penobscot and wearing fresh paint and coupled to the SD40-2 number 3051. Note the variations in their paint schemes, the SD50s versus the SD40-2s.